There are just too many other DevOps tools these days. We have a different cloud providers, infrastructure as a code tools such as for example Ansible or Terraform, CICD pipeline, scripting languages and in the job interview they want you to know it all. No worries, I got your back. So in this DevOps roadmap video, we'll look through different technologies and the order that you should learn to get your uh, dream DevOps job. But we're also going to see what are the specific skills that you need per specific technology. Let's start from the beginning. When we look at the amount of the jobs for the DevOps positions, uh, we have almost 36,000 positions in European Union. Then we have uh, 52,000 positions in US and almost 16,000 pos positions in in India. No doubt that this profession is becoming more and more popular. However, there is a flip side of that DevOps coin and this is complexity. DevOps landscape encompasses a wide array of a different, different technologies and that includes version control systems, CICD pipelines, containerization platforms. Knowing it all is becoming very, very difficult to keep up with the pace. So this is why we're having these sessions right now in order to structure your net learnings for you to better understand which technology you should learn after another. Hi, welcome to NetCafe where we discuss everything networking uh, related. In this channel, we talk about the cloud, networking, DevOps, and if you like this type of content, please consider they're subscribing. Okay, let's start with the basic, which is Linux. And Linux plays such a crucial and vital role in the overall DevOps ecosystem. First of all, it because Linux is a server operating system. It provides stable, reliable and scalable platform to host your applications. So if you, for example, going to install and use Jenkins or Ansible or any other tool, or you'll be starting VM, it will be running Linux. Another reason for Linux being so crucial in the DevOps ecosystem being automation and scripting. Basically, Linux provides a powerful CLI tools and scripting capabilities that enable DevOps teams to automate server provisioning, configuration, deployment, monitoring, and the maintenance of the tasks. DevOps engineers use scripting languages such as, for example, Bash, Python, Perl, to write automation scripts that streamline workflows, improve efficiency and reduce manual intervention. Linux automation and scripting capabilities are essential for implementing DevOps practices such as for example infrastructure as code and continuous integration, continuous deployment. Thirdly, Linux provides a foundation for containerization technology such as for example Docker which allows DevOps teams to package applications and their dependencies into the lightweight portable containers. Linux-based containers orchestrations like Kubernetes mentioned earlier provides tools for managing and scaling containers across the clusters of servers. Second tool, Git. Well, Git is a distributed version control system and it plays a significant role in the DevOps practices. It serves as a backbone for managing source code, repositories, facilitating collaboration among the development teams. When we look at the main key characteristics or key features of Git, it basically enables us code sharing, reviewing the code, branching and resolving conflicts. What is so important about Git is that once the code is developed, we push it to our Git repository and then it's being fetched by by the CICD system such as for example Jenkins. So Jenkins has a login that monitors GitHub for uh, new submissions and when Jenkins sees a new commit it is able to pull the latest version and start the automated build process. But now let's mostly focus on Git. So basically once you learn Linux, in my view learning how to operate Git is a very important thing. Let's now look at the key skills that you need as a DevOps to work with Git. So first of all we have a Git commands and this really enable us an interaction with the repositories, facilitating tasks like staging changes with git add or uh, committing with git commit and pushing the changes to the re remote repositories with for example git push. Second thing is uh, branching and merging in git. So basically branching creates different lines of uh, development for feature or fixes. This is where we would use git branch. While merging integrates changes to the one branch uh, into another this is what where you would use git merge then we also have resolving conflicts and conflicts arise when changes overlaps in files and that really necessitates the manual resolution and for that you would use for example git status git div or git merge 
Last but not least is staging the changes. And staging involves selecting and preparing modifications of uh, next commit with uh, git add. And this process allows us developers to organize changes and maintain commits granularly, enhancing um, clarity and traci traceability in the version control system. Technology number three, CICD pipelines. CICD pipelines, like for example Jenkins, uh, play a central role in the DevOps practices by automating the build, test, and deployment processes. Here, how Jenkins is typically used within a DevOps pipeline. So we have two different pipes. We first start with the continuous integration and then we have a continuous delivery or continuous deployment. As a first step, developers push code changes to the version control system, such as for example Git. Jenkins, while monitors the repository for changes and triggers CI pipeline upon detecting new commit. Jenkins triggers automated testing, such as for example unit testing, integration, or any other system testing that are executed to verify code correctness and quality. If the build and test pass successfully, Jenkins may also generate artifacts. So this is a compiled bi binaries or Docker images that are ready for deployment. And this is where we come for the second phase, which is continuous deployment. And here, upon successful completion of the CI pipeline, Jenkins can trigger a CD pipeline for deploying the application. This part may include stages for deploying various to the various environment. Some tests, like for example smoke testing and acceptance testing, might be executed, executed post-deployment to ensure application functionality. When we look at the key skills that are needed for you as a DevOps engineer to operate a CICD pipeline, such as, for example, we have a pipeline configuration and management, scripting and automation, testing practices, and the security practices. When we look at the first part, which is pipeline configuration and management, and these skills really involve setting up and managing CICD pipelines, defining the stages, triggers, and dependencies. It also includes uh, configuring integrations with version control systems, Docker, SonarCube for the static code analysis, Ansible, or any other software that you would use with Jenkins. Skill number two, scripting and automation. And this skills really involves your ability to write scripts in PowerShell or Bash, but you can also use Ansible or Terraform that I will discuss a bit later to automate as many processes as possible. We want to avoid repetitive tasks being done manually and we need to use some scripting skills in order to configure Jenkins to work automatically. Skill number three, testing practices. And testing practices encompasses really planning, designing and execution various types of tests. And that involves, for example, unit, integration, system, acceptance, regression, different types of testing to validate software quality and functionality. It involves implementing test automation frameworks, uh, writing test cases, interpreting test results and assuring the re reliability and robustness of the software release. Last but not least, security practices. So basically that involves implementing measurements, security measurements to identify, mitigate, prevent security vulnerabilities throughout uh, software development lifecycle. That pretty much involves conducting, for example, security assessments, applying security controls and enforcing secure code practices to safeguard against threats such as, for example, data breaches, malware or unauthorized access. Technologies number four, containers and Kubernetes. Docker and Kubernetes are two essential components in the modern DevOps environment, especially for the containerized applications. Starting with Docker, so basically it is a platform for developing, shipping and running applications in containers. Containers are a portable, lightweight and isolated environments that package everything that an application needs to run that includes, for example, code, runtime, system tools or libraries. In the DevOps pipeline, Docker allows developers to package their application and dependencies into the containers, and that ensures consistency between the deployment, testing, and the production environments. So in DevOps pipeline, Docker is basically typically used in the following stages. The first one is 
development. Developers run and test the application locally in Docker containers, ensuring that they run consistently across different environments. Then we have a CI, CI pipeline, and here Docker images are built automatically as part of the CI process whenever there, there is a code change. So these Im images are then tested to ensure that they meet the quality standard. So everything like this, these operations are done usually by, for example, tools like Jenkins. Then we have a um, continuous development, and in this phase, once the Docker images pass all the CI tests, they are deployed in the various environments such as staging and production, and that when orchestration uh, technologies such as Kubernetes comes into the play. So Kubernetes is an open source container orchestration platform that automates the deployment, scaling, and managing management of the container applications. And this is something that is very important for you as a DevOps engineer to learn how to operate and manage. Kubernetes provides features such as, for example, scaling, uh, self-healing, service discovery, and load balancing between different containers. In the DevOps pipeline, Kubernetes plays a crucial role in managing containerized applications at scale. In summary, Docker and Kubernetes are integral parts of a DevOps pipeline that enables team to build, deploy, and manage containerized applications efficiently at and scale. When we look at the top skills for the DevOps engineers that need to master to work with these technologies, I would say that first of all, it is writing Docker file. These skills involve ability to create Docker files, which are text files that contains instructions to build Docker image it requires expertise in uh, specifying dependencies, configuring environments, and optimizing build processes to create efficient and reliable container applications. Second skill is Docker image management, and this skill really encompasses your ability to manage the containers throughout their life cycle. That is, for example, tagging, creation of the Docker image, versioning, or distribution. Third skill is Docker networking, and that skill involves understanding and configuring networking within Docker environment to enable a smooth communication between different containers and external networks. It includes uh, configuring network devices, defining network topologies, and implementing network uh, security measurements such as, for example, isolation and access control. Fourth skill is secure, con container security. So that involves really implementing the security measurements to protect Docker containers and the environments they run in. It includes techniques such as, for example, image scanning and vulnerability scanning, implement, implementing list privileges, principles, securing configure runtime, and monitoring for suspicious activities. Last but not least, integration with the DevOps tools, and that involves your ability to integrate the, uh, Docker with tools such as, for example, CICD pipelines, Git, Kubernetes, Ansible, or any other tool that you would work with in your overall DevOps environment. Skill number five, cloud providers. So cloud has become such an essential part of today's IT. A few years ago, applications were mostly hosted on the on-premise servers. So that involves, of course, high maintenance, security, and electricity cost. But what cloud does for us, what it provides is the possibility to migrate your applications from on-premise to cloud native environment. So that, that of course brings such a significant benefit, such as for example, cost efficiency as clouds operate in the pay as you go. We have a huge scal scalability possibilities. And of course, last but not least, reliability and redundancy for our services. For you as a DevOps engineer, knowing cloud is a, such an important skill because you will be the one that will be up the scenes for applications to run. And very often you will be using exactly the tools that all the big players, all the big cloud players provide. Let's see the specific skills that you would need. As a first one, I mentioned a service configuration like EC2. Of course, there is no need for you as a DevOps or as an engineer to know all the services that are available for on the different cloud providers. What is important is for you to be able to nav navigate through cloud and be able to configure it in a way that it will enable, for example, secure and smooth communication between different containers, between different applications. So skills such as, for example, being able 
able to set up EC2 instance on AWS or for example starting the VNets on Azure or any other basic activities is something that you might be asked or might be requested to do in your in your workplace as a DevOps engineer. I also mentioned here administration of the cloud so basically you need to know who should have the specific access to the service. I also mentioned security because it's a, such a crucial aspect in today's IT. So all the tools such as, for example, firewalls or access lists, you be the one that also be maybe together with some security calls, you'll be one responsible for setting up to ensure there is a secure and reliable access to the, to the services. Skill number six, Terraform. And Terraform is an infrastructure as a code tool that enables provisioning and management of the cloud infrastructure resources. It uses declarative configuration files written in the HashiCorp configuration language to describe the desired state of the infrastructure components. Terraform supports uh, multiple different cloud vendors, allowing DevOps team to provision and manage resources across hybrid and multi-cloud environments. It provides features such as, for example, dependency management, Management, resource graph visualization and state management to ensure reliable and consistent infrastructure provisioning and updates. When it comes for the skills needed from DevOps engineer, we have Terraform configuration language, so something that I already mentioned, recognition of a different cloud resources, security best practices when it comes for the provisioning of the infrastructure and again scripting and automation in order to provision the infrastructure automatically every time we need it. Then we have Ansible. Ansible is a configuration management tool. So once we already provision the, the resources using scripts from, from Terraform, we can use Ansible to manage the resources. And what does it mean? It's basically if we have a different servers, instead of SSH to each of the servers, we can just create one playbook file or ad hoc command to provision or change or adjust some modification on each of the servers using Ansible. So Ansible is a very popular tool among DevOps engineers because it provides reliable, secure connectivity to each of the nodes and it's also very easy to use and very quick to learn. When it comes to the skills needed to operate Ansible from the DevOps perspective, I would say that first of all it is a playbook creation where we put all the instructions needed to provision our infrastructure with some specific parameter. Then the second tool is uh, networking and different protocols, YAML syntax needed for the playbook creation, understanding of Linux, which is also very important because Ansible will be running on your Linux server. Last but not least, integrating Ansible into the overall DevOps ecosystem. Uh, well, that's it. Thank you very much for watching and uh, remember to subscribe.